We've talked before about how almost everything you use in your day-to-day -day life either came out of the ground or was made with something that came out of the ground. But then, where did all the stuff in the ground come from? For that, we have to go to space! Welcome to the beginning of everything. There is currently nothing. There is no space. That would be something. There's not even any time. But if you look closely, everything that the universe will need to create you, me, and the new season of Gilmore Girls is about to exist. And there it is. Sorta. Unfortunately, due to technical restrictions, I can only show you something so small. This little pixel is the best I can do. If you happen to be watching this video at 4K resolution on a 15 inch screen, this pixel is roughly 0.09 millimeters tall. Pretty small, but still, this one pixel is a million billion billion times bigger than the entire universe was at its inception. The ingredients to everything we will come to know and love were contained inside that tiny space. Things like your friends, hummus, and the complete works of Smash Mouth. But in just fractions of a second, that unfathomably small and very compact universe expanded. In less time than it takes for me to microwave a burrito, the universe has expanded to something you couldn't cross in a million lifetimes. Even though the universe is vast and wide, at this point there are only five known elements. Everything else came from them. Much like the Beatles, they are aging rock stars. Very influential, and we're a big fan of their early stuff. They are hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, and boron. The main two are hydrogen and helium, the John and Paul, if you will. And from these elements, stars were born. Stars are nuclear fusion reactors held together by their own gravity. In the core, when a hydrogen atom meets another hydrogen, because of the immense amounts of heat and pressure, they can become fused together to form a helium atom. But when this happens, energy, in the form of heat, radiation, and light, is produced as a byproduct. This is because making helium didn't actually exhaust the total energy available from the hydrogen atoms. This energy radiates from the core outwards, sending heat, radiation, UV light, x-rays, visible and infrared light out into the universe. And the outward force of this also prevents the star from collapsing under its own gravity. However, once all of the available hydrogen has been converted into helium, the core will become compressed by its own gravity, increasing the temperature and turning it into an angry fireball. At this higher temperature, now helium starts fusing together. When three helium atoms fuse together, we get carbon, the common element of all known life. And even more energy is released, expanding the outer layers of the star until it becomes a red giant. In bigger stars, ones which are at least eight times the mass of our sun, the temperatures and pressures are so massive that even iron, a heavy element, can be formed. However, when heavy elements are made, they don't release energy, they consume it. Once the lighter elements are used up and enough iron forms in the core, there's no energy left to fuse more elements, which means no energy to prevent gravity from collapsing the core. Gravity crushes the core until it implodes and then rebounds outward as an explosion, a supernova. The amount of energy discharged in this one moment is equivalent to all the energy that our sun will produce over its entire lifetime. This, finally, is enough energy to create all naturally occurring elements past iron. We just witnessed the formation of the building blocks of everything. We now have all the ingredients we need to complete the recipe for planet Earth. Join us next time, and we'll get cooking.